Hey everyone, welcome back to Documenting and Exposing West Shore RCMP. This is part 10. So in part 9 we learned some interesting things about the West Shore RCMP. They have a, a zero tolerance for dangerous drivers uh, unless uh, dangerous driver complaints are made by people with YouTube channels about uh, police and justice system and prosecutors. Even though one of their own members was killed by a dangerous reckless driver two years prior to me making this dangerous driver complaint, uh, and Constable Don McIntosh uh, tossed my dangerous driver complaint after he looked me up in their system and found out who I was. And we also learned that there's all these alarm bells going off and all these uh, media posts about how the West Shore RCMP are understaffed and uh, they need more uh, police officers and they need more money and they, uh, they easily fooled Mayor Stu Young of Langford says, uh, yeah, we need, to, we need to throw more money at these guys. The politicians need to support the RCMP so they can do their jobs. <laughs> So with that said, let's get on to, uh, let's officially start part 10. So part 10 is going to start uh, here. I've been waiting for uh, months now. Uh, I've sent the prosecutor, Nicholas Barber, three well-crafted letters uh, requesting the disclosure of my videos uh, or the return of my property or and or the return of my property. So here we are. It's the end of June 2019. I've been waiting eight months for the uh, disclosure of my videos, my evidence. I need to use this at trial. And the trial is in September, 2019. If I don't get these videos soon, I'm not gonna be able to review them and uh, prepare for trial. So uh, I decided I would uh, write Nicholas Barber, Crown Prosecutor, a fourth letter here. And as we can see here, this was written on uh, June 27th. 2019 and it goes something like this mr barber it has been over six months now since i last wrote to you not only have you failed to respond but you have also failed to send me a single thing that i've requested from you you have also taken it upon yourself to delay this matter justice delayed is justice denied isn't it mr barber how do you expect me to defend myself in this matter if you intentionally delay it unreasonably, fail to respond, fail to provide any of the material I've requested? Is this the fairness that Crown is so proud to boast about in your acts and policies? Are you planning on pulling a Kate Dutton and changing the story the day before the trial and dumping a disclosure package in my lap on the morning of the trial? That's fair, isn't it? I have other materials I want to request, but since you have failed to oblige any request I've sent you, so I guess I'll take it up with the judge. Please see my previous letters and send those materials as requested. I am putting you on notice. If I have not received disclosure in its entirety by July 11, 2019, I will not be able to adequately defend myself. I want to thank you for making it easy for me to prove my point after the criminal matter is concluded. You literally could not have made it any easier for me. So, there we go. There is letter number four <laughs> that I've put to Crown Prosecutor Nicholas Barber in writing, requesting the disclosure of my videos, my property, or the return. So I'm basically telling him here, if you can't get this to me two months before the trial, then I'm not going to be able to adequately defend myself. <laughs> and I also reference uh, him pulling a, a Kate Dutton, and that was a, uh, a prosecutor <laughs> that uh, did just that to me. There was this whole uh, bogus charge. This is how I got started in making uh, <laughs> police and justice system videos on YouTube. Was basically basically because of uh, Kate Kate Dutton, a Crown Prosecutor in Victoria, <laughs> British Columbia. So I was being prosecuted for a uh, an assault. It's it's a hilarious story, but I won't get into it. But anyways, uh, it went to trial. Um, I showed up to trial uh, without a lawyer and was going to do it all myself. And uh, the prosecutor, Kate Dutton, uh, on the morning of the trial, she dumped this disclosure package into my lap. And when I looked at it, they had completely changed their story. And uh, I was now stuck with a, a, a 
I had to scramble to come up with new questions for this new story <laughs> on the morning of the trial. It was just hilarious. They had, uh, oh, they must have had, they had over a year to get this all squared away. And, and sure enough, on the morning of the trial, they changed the whole story and then dumped it in my lap. And then I had to scramble and struggle to even just keep it together and keep up with the nonsense that was going on. So that's what I mean by, uh, are you planning on pulling a Kate Dutton and changing the story the day before the trial and dumping a disclosure package in my lap on the morning of the trial? That's fair, isn't it? <laughs> so that's going to wrap up June 2019. I still haven't received uh, my property or, or my evidence or even really a response. And shortly into July, uh, we made this quick video at the Western Communities Courthouse. This is on July 10th, 2019. Hello good citizens, my name is Dan. Today is July 10th, 2019 and we are just about two months away from the criminal trial where I got arrested for taking pictures and video of the West Shore RCMP detachment and today, what we've done today is I brought in all my subpoenas and had them signed by a Justice of the Peace. They all got signed, there's uh, a number of witnesses and those subpoenas are now going to the uh, BC sheriffs and those sheriffs are going to serve all of the witnesses that I may call as witnesses in my criminal trial. That's uh, probably going to be the last update before trial. So I uh, guess we'll see you later. Thanks for watching. So when I received the early disclosure package, which had the statements written by the West Shore RCMP, one of the things that I noticed is that they were referencing a lot of things that other police departments and other police officers were saying about me, that they are using that to uh, as a basis to recommend charges against me for the arrest at the West Shore RCMP detachment on July 25th, 2018, which I thought was odd. Now, um, uh, Mr. Bruce Dean and I, we, we did a, uh, like, a, it's not a FOIA request, but uh, for the RCMP, it's it's called uh, something else. But we did a, a request for uh, the records, for the statements for this police file, as uh, Mr. Dean actually wanted to put in a complaint after uh, the watch commander that arrested me then uh, threatened Mr. Dean with arrest. So we uh, didn't really, get, well, we got a response to the records uh, request for the police statements and the police file, but um, the response was uh, they didn't know what we were talking about and they needed more information. So they basically responded with a non-response. So for now, I don't have anything to publish as far as uh, police statements, but uh, that'll eventually come down the road sometime. So I've subpoenaed a number of police officers that uh, are from not from the West Shore RCMP that uh, were mentioned by the West Shore RCMP that said things or, or made files about me that uh, the West Shore RCMP has actually used as a, a basis to forward the charges against me that um, I'm now facing in a criminal matter. And any uh, police officer that I've had an interaction with that contradicts what other police officers have said or created files about me, I've also subpoenaed those police officers as well. You may remember um, uh, from the Fundamental Freedom Evaluation Series, it was episode six where I went to, uh, it was a prison, and uh, the prison uh, staff, uh, the correction officers, called the Saanich Police, and I had a very uh, cordial, professional conversation with uh, Sanch police officer gave his first first name is Colby. I uh, found out later his his last name is McIntyre. So he's actually uh, one of the police officers that have subpoenaed to my criminal trial. As uh, when you read or well, you'll eventually see what the West Shore RCMP wrote about me, and then when you watch, uh, compare that to the um, video of my interaction with the Sanch police, uh, Colby McIntyre. You'll see that the police are saying. Two very different things about me. My name is Colby. Colby, I'm Dan. Yes, please. Nice to meet you, Dan. Nice to meet you. Hello, but it was nice to meet you. Yeah. Thanks and for being civil with me. Oh, yeah, no problem. It was a pleasure to talk to you. And I've also subpoenaed any of the West Shore CMP members that have had anything to do with this, including uh, the guy that arrested me, Aaron Kundu Thompson. Now, this is interesting because one thing I learned a few years ago is that it's very easy for the police to falsely arrest you 
and you get charges approved and you have a, a criminal trial set and on the day of the trial the police just don't show up because they don't want to lie in court and then uh, the prosecutor or the defense lawyer or the accused makes a motion to have the entire thing dismissed and it's usually granted because the police didn't show up and then nothing happens after that so for me that's not acceptable so what I always do when I'm falsely arrested is I always subpoena all of the arresting police. If you participated in my arrest, you're going to be subpoenaed as my witness. And if you subpoena all of the arresting police officers, that means that they can't skip trial. They have to come to court. They have to testify now. <laughs> and if they don't show up after they've been properly subpoenaed, you can then instruct the judge to issue warrants for their arrest. Usually when police falsely arrest people, they think that the people that they falsely arrested are gonna try to get the charges dropped or, or the whole case thrown out and it never goes to trial. If I get falsely arrested and you participated in my arrest, you're gonna be subpoenaed as my witness and you're gonna have to show up to court and you're gonna have to testify. And if you don't, then I'm gonna instruct the judge to issue a warrant for your arrest. And I found it interesting uh, because I got a, a phone call from a lawyer, from one of the police members that was subpoenaed. And he said something interesting to me. Uh, we were talking about how the prosecutor hadn't responded to my letters for uh, the request for the, the disclosure of my videos, my evidence, and my property. And he said something very interesting to me. He's, he, he said that, uh, oh yeah, you might not get it unless you consent. And I was recording the phone call, and, and I didn't catch it when he first said it, but when I went to look back to listen to it, I, I caught it. And, and I, I, I asked a friend of mine, I, 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 said, well, I asked him, I go, well, what's this guy talking about? He said, uh, I, I might not get my videos unless I consent. Because <laughs> I thought, well, there's no way in hell I'm going to consent to that. But what my friend said was that he had a theory that that's actually how they might get this whole thro thing thrown out and then they might not be responsible for it. Uh, he basically put it to me like, uh, you know, if they're just gonna, they're just gonna withhold all, all of your evidence, they're gonna withhold all your property, they're not gonna respond, they're not gonna give it to you, they're gonna make you wait, um, you know, maybe a year <laughs> after, after asking and then they're gonna say, well, they can't give it to you, you have to consent for the police to search your your cameras and then they'll give it to you and of course i was like well there's no way there's no I'm, i would never consent to that and that's what he was saying was that well the well see because if you don't consent then they're probably just going to drop all the charges because they don't have any evidence and they don't want to bring this to court with no evidence uh, especially after seizing uh, four cameras and a cell phone so he's, he's he told me he said that's exactly what they are expecting you to do and he asked me, do you have anything on those cameras that you don't want them to see? I said, well, well, no, it's, it's uh, like I usually, you know, clear them off. The, what the camcorder had uh, a, a lot of the videos from uh, all of the places that we went to. But the other cameras were, were basically clean. They, they didn't really have, there was like, there was a couple of fishing videos on the, on the chess camera, but for, for another YouTube channel that I have about fishing. But, but other than that, there wasn't like, you know, I wasn't, there wasn't any, anything that uh, would would harm me if the police saw it so my friend actually suggested that that i should consent if they asked me to and i and i was kind of weirded out about it but he he did have a good point he, he said you know if if you don't consent then uh, that's how they're going to drop the charges and that's how they're going to get away with this and that's how they're gonna they're gonna chalk it up as uh you know no harm no foul and that's that's not what i want to get out of this <laughs> So it's, it's interesting that the lawyer that I spoke to for a police officer brought that up and I asked a friend about it and he said, uh, that's, that's probably what they're going to try. That's, that's probably going to, how they're, how they're going to get this thrown out. They're, they're going to get you to throw it out by not consenting. <laughs> and then it's no harm, no foul. They can, they can say, oh, well, no, no, no. We, we dropped the charges cause he wouldn't consent. So, and, uh, you know, when he, when he said this, I was, I was still, I was like, oh, there's no way, there's no way I'm going to consent to this. <laughs> but I thought about it after and, uh, uh, I realized he, he did have a good point. That's, that's probably how, 
um, down the road. That's probably how they're going to get this thrown out. And uh, then that they're going to claim, well, they're, they're not responsible for it because I didn't consent. So that's pretty much your update for July 2019. I still haven't received any of my evidence. I still haven't received any of my videos. I haven't received really anything that I've asked for from uh, Crown Prosecutor Nicholas Barber. So part 11 is, uh, give you a little heads up here, I, I got another phone call <laughs> about, about these subpoenas. And uh, it was from a, a staff sergeant at a, a police department that was not the West Shore RCMP detachment. And uh, he left a, a voicemail on my, uh, my phone saying that the police officer that I subpoenaed to my criminal trial isn't going to be there. He isn't going to make it. Uh, he's had that time booked off for uh, some time for vacation, so he's not going to be there. And uh, he suggested to me that if I had any uh, questions or concerns, that I can give him a call back. Well, guess what? I gave him a call back. And that'll be, uh, that'll be part 11. So it's a very, very interesting phone call. <laughs> so stay tuned for that. You will not want to miss that. And that'll wrap up part 10. So stay tuned for part 11. It's far from over. Thanks for watching.